Welcome back to part two of the Murray Racemore build. Um, I know you guys have been waiting a long time for it and we're trying to get the videos out as fast as we can. In the last video, we were finishing up mounting the seat. And in this video, the goal is to get it driving. Well, I got you here. Our first line of mower merch is out. We have a sale going on right now and the link is in the description if you want to pick yourself up one. And let us know if you want to see the Murray on a shirt in the future. Let's get into it. don't know how we want to tie in these lower segments here um, and it's kind of hard to visualize when we have these big gaps so we're gonna fill those in figure out this will be our test side figure out how we want it to look and then obviously we've got to tie the shifter in over here so we're gonna make up some templates start putting in some metal and come up with a good design I think I'm gonna make this a little smaller at the bottom, but I won't do that top for now. The old chip box and white electrical tape come together. I've got this contraption set up in the vise with my plate in here. I'm gonna heat this up and try and bend it over this round stock for a smooth round edge, hopefully. We'll see. done that before and it turned out way better than I thought. All right, managed to turn a couple cardboard cutouts into this here. Pretty happy with how this turned out. Again, we're not sure how we're gonna tie the bottom in, but now that we have something to look at, um, maybe we can come up with a good idea. So far, we've already tried one shape for the fender and we ended up not liking it. So we welded it back together and we're gonna go ahead and try again. We got the line marked out. Let's get her cut up and welded. It might look like a mess, probably because it is. Um, but we got the trans flipped up. Right now, that's what I'm working on. I was going to do continue making the other side of the fender, 
but our shifter is going to run through the side there if you can kind of imagine the seat in the center um but we got this we got this exposed now um we got a hard shift so that's not going anywhere next plan of attack is to pop the trans open and see what's giving us all the trouble Now that she's open, we can get a little better look at what's going on inside and why it wasn't shifting so good. You can kind of get an idea how dirty it is. We're gonna try and clean it up a bit, see if we can get it shifting a little better. Now that we got all the parts back from the parts washer, we're going to go ahead and assemble them. Now that our uh, differential is welded, we're gonna go ahead and assemble it. Now we just gotta remember where all the parts came out of, because I have a bad memory. <laughs> <laughs> that probably goes like that. Um, this side, it doesn't go stay straight. thing full of grease a lot of people say to use gear oil I have nothing against that but when you flip a trans the shaft has no seal on it so it constantly drips and if you're okay with that and filling it up great I put two sticks high temp grease in the John Deere two years ago still works great so that's what we're gonna do here All right, so you want to coat all the gears for at least the first try since we cleared it. And then you want to pack it in all the areas. Yeah. What is that? Cardboard. Nice. So I'm sure there's actually a proper amount for a transmission and I'm sure a lot of you out there know of a better grease to use but this has worked for me so this is what we're going with <laughs> <laughs> Obviously this will all disperse throughout the gears and get slung to the side but we can't really rotate it without the other cover on because it doesn't hold these gears down so we'll have to spin it once we put it together So when we were assembling the transmission an unfortunate event happened. Uh, we sustained a crack in the housing. Um, it was because the gear selector was not in right and it was uh, torqued down and it uh, cracked because of the pressure. The gear pushing up on the casing. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and JB weld it back together. We'll go ahead and let that dry and sand it down when it dries. I'll probably let her sit for a day or so. We 
are going to go ahead and work on the shifter first. We're getting the seat on and the rear fenders and the wheels on uh, just to check for spacing and to determine where we actually want the shifting handle to go. We're in the process of figuring out our shifter and that circle right there is the hole we're going to drill out for that rod to go through and that's going to be our pivot from the handle to the shift linkage, shift linkage um, on the trans and that should tie it all together um, so we're going to go ahead and drill that through so our rod can slip through so we can mock up the shifter where we want All right, for the folks at home, we've got the old shift linkage here. Actually, this came off a different gearbox. And a little tie rod here. And up here is our shift pivot or shift arm, whatever you want to call it. This is what our, our shift handle will be connected to and spinning. So essentially, all we need to do is make a piece to mount on here for this to bolt up to so that our shifter up top shifts this on the transmission or transaxle i suppose that mock-up did not go as planned uh, i ended up having the shift linkage so the thing connecting to the trans that was on the wrong side so i had to flip it over that's how it's going to sit permanently and i'm going to have to go ahead and cut a chunk of the, the frame out right there okay so we're under here Need to figure out how long the piece from the rod to the tie rod is going to be. And right now we're all the way forward. So if I put it at four inches there, it's still going to reach. And then if we go all the way back into reverse now, that right there, and then at four inches, we're still going to reach. With our finished part in hand now, we can go ahead and weld it up. All right, so we went under the mower, made a couple points of reference. There's our end mark right there, and then a orientation mark or two right there. With that welded in place now, we can go and install our handle. The only thing with this is we need to make sure that the farthest we want it to go back is reverse so that we can set our distance from the wheel. So I went ahead and lined this up so our transmission is in reverse, so the farthest back here towards the tire. And I made a mark on the post here and a mark on our shifter handle. So here's our completed unit. Shifts through like this. Turned out pretty decent. Now that we got our shifter done back there, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the steering. Uh, right now we just have a tie rod connecting them and I'll uh, show you what we got planned when I get under there. Here's our tie rod connecting the two tires and then our engine shaft. And I have our pulley right here, it's a nine inch pulley. And we gotta find a way to work around that. It's probably gonna go obviously above it. Um, but we're gonna have to figure out a way to make our steering still work with our pulley right in the center there. So this is the right side, the right front side you're looking at here. And this is our original steering system connection from our steering wheel. And we're gonna try and reuse this um, so that we just don't have to build another one because it still works. Um, but as you can see here, we're gonna have to build a, a wing off this guy for our steering wheel to control this. So this goes forward and backwards, pushing our tire left and right. After a quick trip to the hardware store, this is what we're working with now. Uh, we got a half inch uh, bar and a fine thread bolt. The idea here is we're gonna weld it onto the end 
like that. And then that's what our tie rod's gonna screw into. Uh, we're gonna make some marks on it, get an offset bent up. All right, we got the bends made up. We're gonna go ahead and cut it to length and weld the bolts on either end. So here's the piece. We just gotta get the uh, bolts on the end still for the tie rods. She's gonna fit in there like that. It's gonna hit there. And our other connection down there. But here's our finished steering piece that I made. Uh, it definitely could look a little better, but it gets the job done. Well, I'm finishing up steering. Dave's getting working on the second side of the fender here. Working on the steering wheel now. If this guy's stuck on there, we're gonna lower it. So we cut it anyway to get it off. Just finished getting the steering buttoned up. Now the steering wheel does look a little tall, uh, but that's just because your knees, uh, how it sits with the seat so low, your knees are a little higher, meaning your hands, it's gonna be a tight squeeze in between your knees. So we had to raise it up a bit just to make it a little more comfortable to steer. One thing we're gonna start working on right about now is getting our fenders ready for the shifter. Uh, we're gonna end up going with a bend like this side uh, we're going to try to match that on the other side, um, and then we're going to end up chopping a little off the bottom. We got the fenders pulled off the door. I went ahead and trimmed the bottom so that they lined up. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and cut the sides in so they match up with each other. We're moving right along on the fenders back here. We've got the insides all finished up. And the outsides, we just need to weld them and shape them together. And then I made these triangle pieces to go in right there. Just uh, tidy it up a bit. Um, and then we gotta figure out a way to mount it. Now on there, um, we still gotta do a little shaping in the corner um, so that our tire will clear the metal right there. We're gonna take a break from that and work on mounting it. 
Um, so the plan back here is to put a one end with a bolt hole through it so we can bolt to the frame. And the other side, we're gonna weld straight to the fender. So it's gonna end up looking something like that. Um, but that should allow us to remove the fender if we ever need to in the future. So to give you an idea of what we're going for here, it's just the rod, kind of like a paddle on the end with a hole through it for the bolt. So there's the positioning down here. And I did it to the same bolt holes on either side. And the same top points, we get to focus up here so that it'll be the same angle down here. Here's the rear all put together, just tacked in place. I won't uh, fully weld it until I get the front done. The front should be pretty much the same situation. Um, gonna make the same mounts. Probably just gonna try to hide them a little bit more because eventually there'll probably be a piece in there to hide the, so you can't see the trans mounts. Um, but I'll catch back up with you when I get those done. As you just saw, we finished up the mounts. Now the fenders are freestanding. Uh, we still got a little work to do with shaping it, uh, but we're gonna move on to the engine for now because our goal is to get this thing running soon. We have a gas tank to mount, a battery to put in, and a engine to find out if it runs or not uh, because it sat outside for a little while and hasn't run in probably six or seven months since the if you watch the first part of the video we rode it around a bit before we started it up here's what we got after playing with it last night i still don't know what half of it does but it works and that's all that matters oh we ended up taking out a bunch of sensors and making everything work somehow uh, all we need to do now is oil change on the motor uh mount the gas gas tank right there and uh, hook the throttle up so in theory the engine should run uh, we just gotta dump some gas in it and we'll see what happens it has been almost two weeks now of trying to get this motor run well mostly of it was waiting for parts in the mail um but we ended up going with a new carburetor because the other one was not working right. And a new coil because when I was wiring it, I wired it wrong and fried it. And also, if you were wondering about the underworkings of the belt, there's the transmission pulley. There's our clutch pulley. There's just a pulley to direct it away from anything that it could rip on. Same thing with up there, and then our engine fully. I can hopefully get a better shot of this when we take everything apart to paint it, probably in the next video. This is hopefully everything we need to get it running. It's just bare bones um, so it doesn't fall apart. And we're just gonna test the uh, the structural integrity, I guess, and if it, if it actually works.
got to fix your, you got to hook up a throttle, do brakes, fix your, your throttles for your, for your ignition system. Yeah. I think we need to do something with this clutch pedal. Is it because it hits? It hits the tire. And hook up some components and then we can start fine tuning the little things. Other than that, that is probably all we're going to do in this video because it's been long enough. You guys so, have been uh, waiting. Yeah. Um, I guess let me know if you got any questions. Hopefully this thing will be done in the next episode. If not, together. I don't know if we'll get to painting it.